It is an absolute pleasure to have been invited to speak at this year's annual convention. Although geographically we are thousands of miles apart, our two institutes share many of the same aims and goals. While our two countries are at different stages in their economic development, the need to develop directors' skills through development and training programs, safeguarding the integrity and status of directorship as a profession by being recognised as a professional body for directors, advocating and providing an effective voice for directors, and latterly promoting good governance practices and standards are common principles that both our institutes look to advocate on a day-to-day -day basis. And it is the latter that I'd like to focus on in my short message today. Governance and leadership are the two critical components, the yin and yang, of successful organisations, regardless of where they are located around the world. If you have leadership without governance, you risk tyranny, fraud and personal fiefdoms. If you have governance without leadership, you risk atrophy, bureaucracy and indifference. And since the global meltdown of 2007-2008, the issues of corporate governance continue to attract considerable national and international attention, and they have again appeared at the top of the agenda. Corporate governance is about effective, transparent and accountable management of affairs of an organisation by its managers and its board. It's about a decision-making process that holds individuals accountable, encourages stakeholder participation and facilitates the flow of information. The global financial crisis has further reinforced the message that the governance of firms, especially of financial institutions, should always aim at protecting the interests of all stakeholders, which include shareholders, depositors, creditors, regulators and the public. As with many countries, including the UK, the corporate sector in Nigeria has had to reassess how effective its governance practices have been. The corporate governance landscape in Nigeria has been dynamic and has attracted interest from inside and outside the country. In 2003, the Nigerian Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, adopted a code on best practice on corporate governance for publicly quoted companies in Nigeria and this code is currently being reviewed. At the end of the consolidation exercise in the banking industry, the CBN, in March 2006 released the Code of Corporate Governance for Banks in Nigeria to complement and enhance the effectiveness of the SEC code which was implemented at the end of 2006. Similar practices have been adopted within the United Kingdom. The UK Corporate Governance Code revised in 2010 in the wake of the financial crisis and was then revised yet again in 2012 and finally in 2014 and it's been instrumental in spreading best boardroom practice right through the listed sector. It operates on the principle of comply or explain and it sets out good practice covering issues like board composition and effectiveness, the role of board committees, risk management, remuneration and relationships with shareholders. It's now adopted by a majority of FTSE 350 companies in Britain, but that hasn't happened overnight. The present system of widespread good governance is representative of over 20 years' work by British regulators, as well as the advocacy role of the Institute of Directors. Our corporate governance team's fundamental aim is to promote good governance right across Britain, where companies fall behind to seek improvements either within that company or within the code itself. Countries starting on the road to promoting good corporate governance can learn from each other, and as Nigerian Securities and Exchange Commission have sought to do, they can align it with international best practice. I'm confident, therefore, that the governance arrangements that you have in place in Nigeria will ensure the highest standards of transparency, accountability and good corporate governance without unduly inhibiting enterprise and innovation. Of course, one cannot hope that a code of principles alone will always ensure the basis of good governance arrangements are upheld. Regulators and shareholders 
have a crucial role to play in providing appropriate checks and balances. But bodies like the IOD also have a key part. As we've demonstrated in Britain, the IOD remains a powerful voice in holding companies to account where governance arrangements fall short. And in Nigeria, it's up to you to ensure that the best principles of corporate governance are maintained. The payoff of ensuring corporate governance is maintained is improved performance and risk, reduced risk, a more sustainable business model, prospect of longevity beyond the involvement of specific individuals, improved confidence and commitment among stakeholders. In addition, there's easier and lower cost access to external capital and perhaps most importantly, legitimacy in the eyes of wider society or to paraphrase a 40-year-old but enduring quote, in the long run, those who do not use power in a manner which society considers responsible will tend to lose it. Our two institutes can learn much from each other and I look forward to working closely with you over the coming years. Thank you again for the opportunity to address your convention. I hope you enjoy the day and that all attendees take the opportunity to engage in lively and interesting debate.